Tokenmetrics is a cryptocurrency investment platform that helps users leverage machine learning to become better crypto investors. Our in-depth analysis helps eliminate the emotions of investing, find profitable investment opportunities, and filters out scams. Learn more at tokenmetrics.com. We are live. Welcome to the market update. This show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com. I'm your host, Bill Noble. If you need a roadmap in crypto and you need to make money in crypto, then subscribe to this channel. Turn on the alerts bell so you know when we're going live. And if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. All right, let's welcome everybody to the stream. <clears throat> we have James, right? Flipped Burger, Taz, hello, right? We have Ali from London, right? We have, got me some, maybe, all right? Kentucky, Oklahoma, Baltimore, right? Raul, hi, right? All right, we have James from Pennsylvania. We have Austin, Texas, right? Where he says, bear markets make future whales. Right, we have Tel Aviv coming to us from the Middle East. The Federal Reserve preview, right? Everybody's tuning in, Chicago, Seattle, South Africa. Everybody in the house, everybody in the house for the Fed preview, all right? Canadians are here from Ontario. Coming up, we got a Federal Reserve decision that's gonna be pretty much surreal. The Fed has to figure out how to fight inflation. It may be too late. And a lot of this inflation is going to get worse because of war. Best fixed income bond market strategist that I know thinks the next month's consumer price index print will be the worst in the 70 year history of the number. So what does that mean for crypto? What does it mean for crypto? Well, it means we're going to welcome India and Tunisia right? Ontario and all of our friends, uh, hi from the crypto hating UK. So some people like it, some people hate it. Let's figure out what's what here on the market update. Fed preview. Dun, 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 dun. What is the Fed going to do? More importantly, what are we going to do? Best way to find altcoins in a market like this is to subscribe to tokenmetrics.com because the artificial intelligence can sort through, okay? Sort through small altcoins and pop them up to the top. We'll go over some of those coins later. In the meantime, for Women's History Month, you can save 10% lifetime with the code WIC10 if you sign up and don't cancel. So you'll always have 10% off. Now, the legacy chart of the day is wheat, food, right? Oil topped, right? We kind of had the number. I don't think we advertised it. So oil topping is actually good for Bitcoin, right? So food higher is also good for Bitcoin. Okay. We've done some mathematical work on that. So keep your eye on food. Also keep your eye out post-fed or pre-fed for any stunts over in the Ukraine by Putin, okay? He knows the Fed meeting's coming up. So whatever he's going to pull out to escalate, he's going to pull it out right after the Fed's done. So like him, don't like him, doesn't matter. We're here to trade crypto. Okay, S&P futures, annoying beyond measure, all right? Everybody sort of was worried that it's going down, okay? There may be one final up thrust because they can't take it through uh, the support at 4,151. The ultimate objective is at 4,000. Most likely, if the Fed comes out and keeps printing money, it's a signal that there's something wrong with the system. But of course, in equities, everything is bullish. So if they keep printing money, they may try to rally stocks. What's your enemy? 
any type of failed rally, right? If they try to take it up and it fails, okay, that's a warning signal, particularly in equities. Now, just a reminder, the Russians are moving crypto over to the UAE, right? They're moving Bitcoin over there to make real estate purchases or to try to get dollars. Now, the Russian ruble is actually doing better versus the dollar of late. So perhaps this is less of a concern and the UAE, uh, UAE counterparties may take Bitcoin in exchange for real estate. So we don't know if there's a big seller out there until after the Fed will go over chart levels later in case the big seller shows up, dumps the market, all right? And I'll tell you where support is. So speaking of that, if there is a dump in the market off the Fed, I'm showing 36,599. So, you know, Bitcoin is getting pretty boring from a chart point of view. You know, 38 is kind of like equilibrium. Resistance is between 42 and 44 and support is at 36 and a half. All right, in ETH, all right, there's 2371 below the market. So 2,500 is support. Most likely, if they dump ETH down to 2371, it might actually come back. So might Bitcoin, right? The new monetary order is in effect. The Saudis are going to start trading oil in the Chinese currency, right? So when they do oil trades with China, they're not going through the dollar. They're going through the Chinese currency. So what does that mean? Well, it means it allows crypto to trade higher for the new monetary order trade. All right, that, ha that trade hasn't been done yet, right? Because every time ETH or Bitcoin goes up, like here, you get like a 13 top and it goes right back down. So all you can do is start getting your head ready for this, for this Fed meeting, right? If it dumps, it's probably gonna come back unless the Fed goes on the war path. Right. If it rallies, you don't want to see a failed rally. You don't. And if it rallies, okay, that's great. Right. It's the future of money. Right. Or it's the future of money for, say, the next two weeks. The market's probably going to go back and forth. My guess is if crypto does better, it's going to be Bitcoin and beat up altcoins. More on that later. So let's talk about token metrics. The the KuCoin Daily Index. So what is this? Well, every day, our AI for a variety of exchanges, and the AI does this daily, weekly, and monthly across all types of exchanges. All right, sorry about that. Types all type of exchanges, okay? And in the KuCoin Index, uh, we're noticing like Luna is still in there, okay? ThorChain, Rune is in there. So the mo it's picking up on momentum. And it's also picking up on something called Pirate Chain, all right? There's been some talk. Uh, some of our internal guys are watching this. And if there are altcoins that are interesting, our AI will help you find them, even if the market is uncertain. So here's Pirate Chain, A-R-R-R, -R -R, right? So 133 is a big level. And if that holds, you could get as high as 143 or 162. All right. That's a little bit out. That's not that outside the box. But, you know, if you see Pirate Chain taking out 143, that would be constructive. Okay. Rune. Now, <laughs> should I break my rule and just, you know, FOMO? Well, no even though I like Rune, even though I got brutally, <laughs> this thing stopped me out. It's all right. I got back in. All right. Rune, not investment advice. There is technological risk execution with this. Okay. Took out a key technical point at 703. So if Rune holds above 703, it means it's got legs to 870. Okay. A lot of times when you have a one coin market, it stays that way, right? I mean, AVAX ran and ran and ran, okay? Phantom did the same thing. So did Luna. So, as you know, you just keep moving the stop up.
Rune is above 703. If our AI is picking it, leave it. Leave it, right? Because this thing's got a mind of its own, right? Now, if it breaks down, right, everything that nothing outperforms forever, you just focus on 703. Luna, we're looking at 92. So we're making a decision. Mr. Market knows the level is there. Is Luna going to take out 92? Shorts think no. Longs think yes. All right. If Luna bulls are right, our AI keeps picking it every day, which means the token metrics grade is above 80. Right. So as long as our token metrics grade is picking Luna, okay, if Luna gets above 92, it could go to 140. There's going to be a winner take all in DeFi. Right? There could be a trade off the Fed where there's exasperation with the current banking system or U.S. dollar system. It's happening, right? Now, is that bullshit or, you know, should, are all altcoins going down? I don't think so. Not off the Fed announcement, right? The first trades are always sort of uncertain and it takes the market a while to settle down. So if everybody's afraid and then the Fed comes out and says, all right, everybody relax, that could allow things like Luna and Rune to do better. Now, interestingly, people are, are, are asking me about Ave. I'm wondering if there's a final puke in Ave below 100 to like say 96, and that's where you get a bounce. So thinking about DeFi, because DeFi has been totally destroyed, right? There may be one final heave, AVAX, a lot of people suffering in this. If AVAX comes above 72.50, then this give up trade is over. Now, there's a pretty good indication. If you look at that Williams moving average, I'm sorry, that Williams uh, oscillator, right? You see how that's on an uptrend, right? After AVAX kind of, you know, made its final puke. So I'm really interested in Avalanche at these levels, right? If Avalanche takes out 72.50, Avalanche can make a comeback. So can Phantom, right? Phantom like loses half of its value. The, the thing I drew is outside the box, but I've got a low in Phantom either at a dollar three or it's not shown on the chart, but 97 cents if they really heave it, right? I, I wouldn't blame anybody if they said, you know what? I'm going to get long Phantom in front of a dollar. Not investment advice, but man, have they really killed this thing? They have really killed some of these top line layer ones. So if you get one or two updates in crypto, man, these things can come back. Now, are you willing to make that bet in front of the Fed? Well, you know, sometimes the way it's been, you've had to make the bet in front of the Fed. By the time the Fed decisions come out, the trade's over. That happened with an unemployment number and a Fed decision. So I'm not telling you to do anything, right? I don't want you to get wrecked, but it looks like the phantom trade may have run its course on the downside. Jasmine, oh my God, where's the Jasmine guy? Remember that guy coming in going, what about Jasmine? What about Jasmine? I'm like, dude, it looks like a give up trade. Well, holy shit, this thing turns around. So it's like a huge Google search item yesterday. Right, Jasmine, after the give up trade, smoked higher. All right. Now, in terms of, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, can this continue? I don't know. Right. You probably got a lot of trapped longs. This is a 15 minute chart. So this is March 15th at noon. So this won't have much of a shelf life. Uh, if, if Jasmine holds 0.0169, right, and it gets up, uh, back above 0.019, then you got a shot at 0.0269. If it's not above po Ugh. it's not above 0.0169, all right, then we either got to draw something else or, you know, uh, that was it. You know, it dump, 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 and then that was the bear market rally. But for the Jasmine guy out there, man, I hope it rallies for you. Good call on your part for sticking with it when it was just falling out of bed. And that's the market update. All right. All right. Any thoughts on helium? All right. We're going to go straight into the DeMarc work, straight into the charts. 
All right. So let's get the screen shared. Wow, big request list in front of the Fed. Well, I tell you what, I've been in this market for a really long time, right? And I haven't seen anything as big as these Fed meetings in the middle of this war with all this inflation. I mean, I, I am really glad that I'm not Jerome Powell. Seriously, I, I really am. Because that guy's job is, I, I mean, his, that's like mission impossible. It's like, if he doesn't raise rates, it means there's something wrong with the system. Okay. If he does raise rates, okay, most likely everything just freaks out. Sometimes I wonder if he's going to raise rates just to <laughs> actually fight inflation and pretend everything is okay with the financial system, even though it's not. I can tell you right now, he comes out dovish. They will rally stocks, but that means something's wrong, which could be good for Bitcoin and bad for everything else, but we'll see. Okay, so here's Monero, a requested item. Resistance in Monero is at 230. I think all you can really do in this market, which will make for decent TV, at least for the moment, is try to come up with levels that matter. Like what levels matter? So if you saw Monero rock it up, okay, to 230, all right, that, that is a point where, you know, you would probably take profits, okay? But if it ever blew through 230, I mean, you got to remember how destroyed this thing is and has been, right? So, I mean, Monero... Okay, Monero was like 350 going back to August. Okay, so let's go to near, since I know people are, are really interested in that. And I was looking at that right before I came on the air. I didn't put it in the deck because I figured live to mark work is more entertaining. Okay, so here's near. Okay. So nothing going on here that's particularly bullish or bearish on the daily chart. So one thing you need to remember is if there's nothing bullish or bearish going on, then there may be nothing to do. You just wait, right? I mean, you know, 846 is a level on the downside. And if near took out 1053, then you could get constructive, right? You just, you know, you got to have your all coins. You got to have your support and your resistance. Sometimes you got to have two support points and two resistance points to just let this thing gyrate, right? And then say, okay, is my coin holding or not holding? Okay, I saw somebody mentioning Elrond. Let's see what's going on there. Okay, here comes Elrond. All right. So nice rally. Okay. You know, Elrond is another one of these mind of its own coins. So you're coming into a nine top right at 156. So the thing you want to watch out for in Elrond is you want to watch out for a dip, right? If you get the dip and then it starts coming back and takes out 156, we all know that, well, you, you may know the way this thing can trade, right? When Elrond moves, I mean, it just goes. Okay, so, you know, in a range bound market, 156 is a good move. All right. If it blows through 156 after making the nine top, well, you know, then it's on in Elro. Okay, so if you look at the daily chart, it's moving through some moving averages and it's got a shot at 199. So if Elron you know, is not bothered by the nine top on the four hour chart, <clears throat> it can go to 199. And this is a suspicion I have in crypto, at least when I looked at the charts this morning. It's like, there's all this stuff about, I don't know, you know, like people wanting to sell it, like the Russians in UAE, you know, altcoins have been beat up, speculative assets. I'm wondering whether they just want to, the Fed's going to come out and people want to buy it. 
And who knows how long that rally lasts. It could last a day. It could last four hours. But as you can see, it's like it feels like they want to try to take things up. All right. Now, <laughs> whether that works long term, okay, I don't know. Okay, Dash, the mother of all heartbreaking coins. I don't know. Is there anything more heartbreaking than Dash? For me personally, no. Okay. So there's the 13 bottom. And then I'm not getting any upside from there. So let's take a look at a, <clears throat> you know, a four hour chart of Dash. Okay. So there's resistance at 102. All right. So obviously Dash has got to get above 100. Because, you know, it stopped at 100, I don't know how many times, right? And then while we're looking at this, let's look at the other scourge coin that kills us all, which is Zcash, right? So every time Zcash rallies, the market dumps. Let's see if something has changed, okay? So this is Zcash on a four-hour chart. There's a 13 top. But look, we're coming up on a nine bottom right on top of one of these DeMarc smart moving averages. So that's interesting, right? Monero's got a lot of room to go up. You know, Zcash didn't curse the market, right? Zcash is holding support, right? So you're getting this feeling like Phantom may have found the bottom. AVAX is $2 away. So <clears throat> some of these old coins may want to come back. They may want to come back. Now, how long are they going to come back for? Well, I don't know. Like, Anywhere from six hours to two weeks, right? Let's keep our fingers crossed because this is an altcoin show, right? All right. So we have somebody asking for ORN. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay. So ORN has been destroyed. There is two 13 bottoms and a nine bottom down here. And it looks like it wants to go up. Not investment advice, probably to 306. So wouldn't it be funny? She called the stream that. Wouldn't it be funny if altcoins decided to go up during the two days that the Fed was meeting? I mean, crypto people will take it, right? Because the only time you have to worry is time after they come out and say what they're going to say. But wouldn't it be funny if altcoins kind of squeezed higher? Okay. All right. Let's take a look at helium. Helium, I know, was up yesterday. All right. So helium is probably trading in a range. There's a lot of support around 20 and a half. So it seems to be kind of stuck there. All right. And there's really nothing going on on the daily chart of substance. So some of these altcoins look totally washed out. You know, helium is getting sold on any rally above 22. And that's all there is to say about it. It's like, I know you're out there going, tell me something I don't know. Right. We can try to look at a 90 minute chart. Okay, so there's your range in helium, right? <laughs> You're sitting in the middle of it. Support is at 1969 and resistance is at 2244 and that's it, all right? Lawson Smith from Oregon, welcome to the show, okay? Welcome to the show, okay? Jules is looking for BSW. I don't have that on this system. Let's go over here, okay? Jasmine is holding. Check that out. Okay. Okay. I've only got that versus wrapped ether. I'll have to look at that later on another day. Actually, do it right now. Sapphire versus the dollar. Okay, that's S-A-P-P. -P. If 
So hopefully I have this right. Okay, so I would say in this, <clears throat> you know, you get these rallies, right? You get these big rallies, right? You get a five wave structure. So I'm sorry, I had to take a minute to think about this. I know that doesn't necessarily make for entertaining television. So it looks like when we went from 16 to 60 in this, let me just label this. And again, hopefully I've got the symbol right. Okay, there's good support basically at just below 50 cents. So there's FIB support and trend line support right there. Okay. All right, we got to 100 chat messages today. Thank you for that. Please hit the like button. Definitely appreciate everybody who does hit the like button. Johnny Ice Cream from Pennsylvania, welcome. Okay, Solana, right? So this is a 90-minute Solana chart, all right? You know, they tried to take this below 80. Like, check out, this is a 90-minute chart. Check how many times they tried to take this down. They took it down here, here, right? That was like, I don't know, what, what level was this? Like 80, 80, eight, it was like 80 and a half. Then they slammed it at 79, one, two, three times. You know, and it'd be funny if they took it up to 88. <laughs> you know, again, folks, when we got to start going to 90 minute charts, you know, we're like, I don't know. It's like, it's like we're doing micro technicals in some ways, right? It's like, you know, you're, the, the range is so tight. You've got to go to these really short term charts. All right. So in Solana, multiple 13 bottoms, final climactic puke. Support at 77 held, which we did mention that point, right? So to get really excited, Solana's got to take out 82. And if they have like a hooray rally post-Fed, it's 90. Okay. Now, if you were a bag holder in Solana and it got to 90, what should you do? Okay. You have to ask yourself with all of these coins, if they go up, am I going to sell? And in things like Bitcoin and Ethereum, you're asking yourself, if the market dumps, do I want to buy it? All right? You need to have capital, obviously, and you need to have the wherewithal. Because remember, the market has paid you to sell it when it looks awesome and buy it when it looks terrible. Right? So, I mean, if Solana goes to 90 and it looks like it's going to the moon, sell. Right. If ETH dumps to 2300 and it looks like it's going to zero, buy uh, uh, unless, you know, something happens in the, uh, over in Eastern Europe that is, you know, unthinkable. Okay. All right. All right. Somebody's asking for Binance coin. Okay, so we're looking at Binance coin and all right. So on a four hour chart, Binance coin's got the 13 bottom, right? I do not subscribe to the end of Binance, right? Binance has problems, but I think governments and the crypto community should be applauded for not shutting off crypto, right? To anybody who needs it, right? Like everybody in Russia, whether they watch state TV or whether they support Putin or whether they don't, they're still human beings and they have a right to be able to get food, shelter, diapers, whatever they need to get. And if they need to get it with crypto, well, let them, right? They're still people, right? In crypto, we want to be a, but we want to be the best people we can be. So in Binance, if you have a 13 bottom and they've tried to kill this thing, Below 363, all right, so if the government comes down on Binance, well, you don't need me to tell you what's going to happen. But if they don't, Binance coin could go right back to 400, okay? The crypto clan is bullish on Binance. Oh, my God. Somebody wants me to look at cake. 
and cake swap like the altcoin casino all right so like all these altcoins right it's like total destruction derby 13 bottom blows through the support at 550 right and then puts in a nine bottom so at, at least for a day this is a four hour chart this could be constructive right it's like it's almost like you know we're gonna have like you know shitcoin fest for like two days while the fed meets i don't know right it's like who would think to buy shit coins while the fed's talking nobody right it's possibly a good opportunity you know to like to to de-risk or to like move your portfolio around all right now not hating on cake i'm just saying you know if you've got certain uh you know if you've got certain coins that aren't doing well that start rallying, you know, before a major event, think about that. Someone's asking for Litecoin. Uh, while that's coming up, I got somebody who says this, check this out. Unless Joe Biden and Boris Johnson come to Saudi Arabia and bow to the King, like what Obama and Trump had done before them with the, oh my God, emoji. All right. Yes. There is a lot of stuff going on in the geopolitical world. I would love to talk about it on the stream. If you want me to talk about those things on the stream, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, you know, in the meantime, I, I will stick to altcoin. So Litecoin, okay, heartbreaker, all right? Heartbreaker, heartbreaker, heartbreaker. Every time Litecoin moons, what happens? The market dumps, okay? Even though I don't understand why a faster version of Bitcoin would not be appealing to people, have never understood that, but people hate the tech, okay? So if somebody buys Litecoin, it'll go up to 153. If no one buys Litecoin, it'll sit at 113 or dump to 69, right? I mean, that's the, that's the Armageddon level in Litecoin. <laughs> that's like crypto is illegal, okay? Um, Harmony. Okay, so this is the daily chart of Harmony. Looks like it's getting ready. It's got a nine bottom and it's getting ready to make a 13 bottom on the daily chart. Okay, so there's a 13 bottom. The last 13 bottom produced like eight hours of upside. Uh, I don't know if this is the eight hours of upside in harmony or not. Let's take a look over here. Okay. Just to make sure I'm looking at the right symbol. Okay. So, you know, on the 89 minute chart, right? This could be turning around. Let's go to like a four hour on harmony. All right, so I would say you could go nuts in Harmony if it gets above 0.1269. That would probably start a, a momentum trade, but you can you can get this idea that, you know, people are starting to grab these altcoins while the Fed is meeting. So it's like a two-day altcoin festival, okay? So looks rare, and I've got somebody cheering on the like button there. Whoever's doing that, I definitely appreciate that. Okay. Now, th this was funny, right? This, uh, these guys look like they were going to come out and challenge open C. They came out and challenged open C, but then they had some sort of like wash trading problem. So you got to be careful doing technical analysis. Uh, you know, when, when you got, potential regulatory scrutiny. Now, in the short term, it looks like, you know, that Williams moving average system uh, is, is, is going your way. If you're long this thing, I, I would say if you blow, if you blow this up, right, let's go with like a, a four hour chart. I mean, realistically, I think you got to be like these things can bounce, right? They get oversold and then they bounce, right? 
But really what you gotta, you gotta say to yourself is are willing, are people willing to pay higher prices? So if looks rare gets above a dollar eight, then, you know, you can be more constructive. But again, our fundamental guys put out the warning on this thing before it dumped that you may have wash trading going on. So, uh, you know, the FUD is out. Let's just look at the daily chart to see how bad the damage was. Yeah, so they destroyed this thing, right? Totally. Let's take a look at our Fibonacci speed resistance line to see if we get anything interesting. Okay. And let's go back to the four-hour chart. You know I'm giving you all a headache with this. So is looks rare breaking out? Yes or no? All right. So if you look at the Fibonacci extension work, looks rare may be breaking out. It did this sideways thing, which I've seen before. They took out this line and then they broke through it, right? They broke above it. And this is your old school bump and run, right? See this line? So, you know, if I was long this, I'd give it a shot. Let's see if it takes out a dollar eight. Right now, you don't know how long the altcoin pop can last. It could be over five minutes after I get off the air, or it can last another day. Kind of hoping Avalanche and Phantom can do can can play a leadership role along with Room. Okay. Andre says Kyber is alive again. Kyber, a huge token metrics pick, right? A huge token metrics pick. Okay, here comes Kyber. Okay, I know Taz is cheering for Avalanche. I'm cheering for Avalanche because Taz is cheering for Avalanche. Okay, we have Kyber Network, right? Doing that nine top thing right at $3.22. So, like I said, the market has paid you to take your money, right? When it gives it to you, right? So, I mean, Kyber was down at, I mean, when token metrics caught on to this, Kyber was down here, okay? At like $1.75. Now let's look at a daily chart, see if we got anything going on, see if we have anything like a broader trend happening. So here's a couple 13 tops. There's a lot of resistance at 316. So that's your level, right? If Kyber takes out 316, right? Especially if there's a dip first and then it does it, all right, then it's on. It's on, right? Now, if it doesn't take out 316, what, what do we say, right? Buy support, sell resistance. So I'm not telling you that there's anything wrong with Kyber, but I don't want you to FOMO in right? Until it breaks out, until it proves that it's not a top, because if you go from one and a half to three in a bear market, you know, don't forget to pay yourself, at least take some of the money. All right. Yes, Bill, talk about geopolitics. All right. Well, we can weave that in. We can weave that in throughout, uh, throughout future streams. Okay. One thing that I will tell you about geopolitics as I welcome somebody, I believe from Switzerland, all right? There is absolutely no doubt that the best way to take down the United States is to scare the stock market, right? All these headlines like, you know, the Saudis are gonna start taking yuan, the Chinese yuan for oil. You know, Saddam Hussein said the same thing. He was gonna start trading oil for euros. We've heard this before out of the Middle East. What's everybody trying to do? Spook the stock market, right? That's how you take down America. You take down housing, you take down the stock market, or, you know, you create inflation that's so bad, you know, you have like a recession, demand destruction or whatever. So I understand that what the Russians are doing in Ukraine 
looks pretty, you know, awful on CNN. It's like the first war that you've seen where you've got Twitter and social media following what's happening. You didn't have that in a lot of other wars, right? You've had cable news, but not, not just that, but the social media. So be very careful. Be very careful about underestimating a guy like Putin, right? If you're watching civilians getting hurt, if you're watching his military look inept, okay, don't doubt that that's exactly what he wants you to look at, okay? So, <laughs> you know, Russians have no, all war, let's do this. All war is about deception. And Russia is a country famous for making sacrifices, okay? They will sacrifice financially. They will sacrifice in blood and treasure. So you got to be careful of this guy. You got to be careful of this guy after the Fed. You got to be careful of this guy like in April as well, right? If he gets frustrated, right? Always, always manage your risk, right? And I still think the big trade is short equities. I know the whole world thinks that now. I just don't see how the stock market can hold up indefinitely unless the Fed increases the amount of money it prints. All right. So that was a mini geopolitical little speech there. Okay. Alan says re recessions are survival, survivable. Depressions aren't. And that's what's coming soon in Russia. Their economy is in trouble. Okay. So, you know, again, when it comes to these things, like what's going on with the Russian economy, my guess is the worse it gets over there, the more Putin could be supported. They're going to blame the United States, not their leader. You know, you would think you would hope differently. Okay. But again, if you look at the history of World War II, and you look at Russian culture, those people over there can suffer. They can take it. And have you ever watched a Russian movie, opera, or any type of theatrical or sort of, um, you know, literary work that had a happy ending? So these guys are tough. They're tough. Now we're leaning on them. All right. But, you know, Mr. Putin may be developing support for his programs. All right. For his war. Right, he's KGB, so he's a couple steps ahead of us for sure. Okay, Farmer Sam says the world economy is in trouble. Everyone is running into crypto, but governments want to regulate it because they can't control it. Okay, and Tom notes that you know FTM is making moves. All right, uh, all right. So they're distracting us with this war while they. I don't know, do something with like digital passports and potential like, you know, like uh, social credit scores, right? This is a good thing to know. Read charts, okay? Look at the markets. And when you're watching something, be careful to note whether or not it's propaganda, right? There's crypto Kool-Aid, right? I try not to be a moon man in crypto, even though that's hard to do, right? Always be, always be cognizant of what you're listening to. And remember, nothing is what it seems. Okay. I think I did. I think I did OGN already, but I will do it again. Okay. So OGN major, major moonshot on the daily chart from 25 cents to 50 cents. Okay. I apparently did not do this before. So interesting that the four hour chart, okay. So the four hour chart had the 13 bottom, it had the nine top, it stopped, and then it turned around and went back up again. Now, you know, how much can you get out of this? Okay, let's go over here and look at this. This is obviously a major move. So I want to get the chart right on this. I want to get the chart right all the time, but okay. So a lot of times when these things shoot up like this, okay, that's when I like going to like the fib extension work. So let's take a look here and see what we get. All 
All right, now I'm going to the four hour chart. Let's see what's up. Okay, so it pulled up. The real resistance was like at 58 cents. So it pulled up short of the real resistance at 58 cents. Probably means somebody's in a hurry to get out, right? When you get a 25 cent to a 50 cent move, you know, people may be headed for the door. Now that said, if you go to a very short term chart, okay, support may be down here at 38 cents. Actually, I'll tell you where support is. It's not, it's not that low. No, maybe it is that low. So between 38 cents and 41 cents is where support is. If you're looking to buy dips, okay, this is OGN 89 minute. Okay. So that's, what's going on. There is Feb 15. Okay. I know we have somebody who likes Orion. Let's see what's going on in Orion. They okay, don't have that here. Okay, so in things like Orion, you have to be careful, right? When you have these big down moves, assuming I got the right symbol here, right? Orion money. Let's actually try over here to make sure I got the right thing. Okay, so there's Orion protocol. I'm assuming that's what we're talking about, not Orion money. All right. So to me, this looks like a give up trade, right? Everybody sold the rally, right? And now bears are just kind of packing it. Bulls are kind of packing it in. So it, it's really hard to figure out where like support might be. Let's try this. Okay, one more thing. Okay, so I'm guessing 255. Let's try one more one more thing. I promise this is it. Okay, so 2 270. If 270 is not the low in Orion protocol, then you're looking at a more extended give up trade. Let me label it since I spent a lot of time on it. Okay. If you're long it, you got to hope 270 holds. Generally speaking, this looks like a give up trade. Okay. It looks like a give up trade. Okay. Ryan likes my Twitter. I appreciate that. My Twitter has been redecorated. So you can check out, you can check that out. All right. Going full, all out, notorious flow. All right, let's look at flow. Okay. So this is a daily chart. You got a 13 bottom that's constructive, right? That sort of lends credence to this idea that, you know, if all coins are going to go up, you're going to see all coins go up, say while the Fed is deliberating, right? So you got the 13, the nine bottom, the puke to 510, and now it wants to turn around and maybe it gets to 563, okay? Just remember, an old coin rally can last two hours. It can last two days, you know? Wouldn't it be great if it lasted two weeks, right? But some of this stuff is so destroyed, a bounce is kind of natural, right? It's kind of natural. And if it does get the big bounce, you got to ask yourself, do I want to hold this through a broader bear market? Okay. 
Okay, let's see if BUR is in here. No. Okay, looking for VUR? Nope, not seeing it. Flow showing bullish divergence there. Okay. Let's check flow over here. Okay, not not seeing not, not seeing a lot, not seeing a lot on this particular chart. Okay. And let's go to the four hour chart and see what we get on flow. All right. So again, you know, with flow on a four hour chart, it, it kind of looks like they just gave up. Now I do get what you're saying in terms of, you know, flow got so far away from its moving average system, right? That the reversal candle down here, right? Around 517 actually created a nice pop. So if you get one more up candle or one more stable candle in flow, uh, I do agree that yes, you know, this new low here was not confirmed by a new low in stochastic. So, you know, flow's got bounce potential. All altcoins have bounce potential. The question is, you know, when's it going to be over? That's the question, right? Okay, somebody looking for Algorand, a regular, no doubt. Right, this is another epic pain coin, okay? So Algorand, uh, this is the four-hour chart. You get the 13 bottom, you get a final puke. That's really difficult to trade. And then it turns around and does better. Okay. Algorand pretty close to a 13 bottom support at 64 in the event of a debacle resistance is up at 86. Okay. Let's go to a 90 minute chart because again, Algorand has kind of been in this range for a while. All right. I would say in order for something to change in Algorand, you got to get above 71 cents, right? Because that's, that's been the top end of the range for like two or three days. You get the 13 bottom and it goes back up again, right? A lot of people, a lot of VCs who get caught in these coins, they, they sell them. And until there's a fundamental catalyst, right? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, doesn't give you, doesn't give you the punch that you need. So it doesn't look terrible, but again, I keep coming back to this, you know, is somebody willing to pay higher prices for my altcoin? Right. Nobody has wanted to pay more than 72 cents for Algorand. Now, could this be a double bottom? Maybe, but you got to take out 71 cents. You got to see people willing to pay higher prices. IOTX. Okay. This will be the last one today. Okay. This is against Bitcoin. That's not what we want. Wow. Okay. So you got the nine top, you got the dip, and then this thing kept right on going. So that to me is interesting. Now you got a lot of resistance at eight and a half cents, right? Eight and a half cents, you got resistance. Okay. But, you know, whatever's going on here, you know, this could be, this, this thing could be waking up. Okay, here's the daily chart. Okay, obviously, as you can see, you know, this, this thing has been destroyed and there is this DeMarc bottoming signal going on here. So let's go over here because this may be worth a second look. See if we got anything going on. So up 7% today. 
Okay, we have looked at this before, obviously. That's what all this is about. All right, so let's see what we get from the FIB speed resistance line. So this is IOTX daily, right? And the question is, is this a real deal breakout? Okay, so I would say on IOTX, right, to get the real deal breakout, the level is, I don't know, probably 0835. Right now, again, today is bullish altcoin day. So it's easy to be constructive on a day like today. On a four hour chart, you're going to know that this is for real. Okay. You're going to know if it's for real is if you get that nine top and then it doesn't budge right now, it looks like people are, are taking their money because again, you know, you really got caught in this thing. This thing, you know, really lurched down on you. So there's people who are going to sell the first rally, right? But if it doesn't back off and you're holding it, then just leave it, right? Steve J wants to be short gold and long Bitcoin. Well, uh, people on Twitter would certainly appreciate that idea, okay? Would be really interesting if the Fed gets hawkish, hikes rates, that hurts gold, Right, but you have to remember if the Fed gets hawkish, you got you got to be mindful of the dollar, right? If the dollar goes lower, that helps gold and that also helps Bitcoin. Right? So, let's take a look at the dollar because we didn't look at it in our legacy part because I know that, you know, people only have so much patience for legacy blah 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 blah. Right? I like legacy, right? And mixing it with crypto, but it's not always popular. So it looks like people continue to buy the dollar, which of course is nauseating. And we've been dealing with this for a while, but when there's a crisis and there's a liquidity problem in the world, people want dollars. Now you might be like, well, Bill, what's the crisis? Okay, well, I mean, look at what is going on in Chinese equities. I mean, you know, FXI is making another new low. I mean, you almost can't keep this on the page. You almost can't keep it on the page. Okay. Something is going on with Chinese real estate. Rising interest rates are hurting them. Okay. Like Hang Seng last night. I mean, this was already priced in. This is the weekly chart. I mean, something is wrong over there, man. And, you know, if the Fed hikes rates and that hurts China, then we're going to have two big countries mad at the United States. So, you know, this all comes together somewhere. Now, how it affects your altcoin? Well, honestly, I don't know. Today's an up day, so it's easy to be positive. It's easy to be positive, right? And if you get a rally off the Fed, ask yourself this question. Can I tolerate if can I tolerate it if this thing turns around and goes down? Okay? Now you could get a positive rally for 2 weeks. I'm guessing that if there is a crypto rally after the Fed, right, we're kind of gonna, it, it's kind of gonna be more Bitcoin related, right? In other words, this whole idea about the future of money, if the Russians don't sell, right, because I'm not the only one who read the CNBC article, if the Russians don't sell, Bitcoin and crypto can be positive. Now, I know that people on YouTube want definitive predictions, right, but there is no such thing in front of something like the Fed. There's just no such thing. Okay. The Fed meeting is over the next two days. The results of the decision will come out on the 16th. So not today, but tomorrow, right around midday. Always remember on the Fed, I'll probably say this tomorrow, right? Because I think we're going to be meeting after the Fed. So tomorrow's live stream will be at a different time. It will not be on the usual time because there's no point in doing charts as the decision comes out. So what you will be looking for tomorrow is what did they do with the Fed funds rate? Most likely they're going to increase it by 25 basis points. That's assumed. Question is, do they buy less mortgage-backed securities? 
because they try to pull the plug and deflate U.S. housing in an attempt to stop inflation. Okay. So all we can do, all we can do is wait and see and make sure you have a support and resistance. I'd be happy to give them to you, but you know what? You can look for support and resistance. You find out where you are and you look to the left, right? Where did the market start or stop before in the past? So have confidence in yourself. And of course, stay tuned with token metrics. All right. We appreciate everybody. That's going to be it for today. All right. We are going to see you tomorrow. Thank you.